want the bad news or the really bad news because there's plenty. I'm going to cut straight to the chase here and I am going to show you a tweet from Guardian journalist Jacob Steinberg. Excuse me if you already know some of this, but I'm going to work on the assumption that you don't know. Um, Steinberg's well connected at West Ham, so let's just say that. That's not, that's not a rumour. He is. He is well connected at West Ham. This is his tweet. It's a tweet he put out to promote an article which he'd written in the newspaper. Uh, Mr Steinberg said David Moyes is safe from the sack, but he still faces a battle to deal with the squad's unhappiness with West Ham's tactics. Uh, the, the beginning of the article, the headline of the article is David Moyes faces growing dressing room discontent over West Ham tactics. I'm going to go into the article in just a second, but I will, I will say this about, well, not just Jacob Steinberg, but any journalist who, who works for a reputable newspaper, or, or a, you don't have to work for a reputable newspaper, but any journalist worth their salt won't run with this story unless he has been briefed. He will have been briefed by somebody on the playing staff for him to write this. I suspect I know who it is, and I suspect he's heard it from more than one source. You've got to be careful, I'm imagining, when you're a journalist. You don't want to run out and, and put an article out there that's not accurate. I should probably say that he is a West Ham fan as well, and he probably won't walk in the balance on this one because he gets a lot of his information directly from the club, from the hierarchy at the club, from... David Sullivan, in essence. So um, he's had to um, he's had to walk a, th a thin, a very thin line on this one. But uh, this is anyway. My point is, and I'll go into the article in a minute. This is terrible. If this is true, and this has turned out to be news, a revelation to the ownership, we are in. We are in a precarious situation. We are in peril, because this stuff is obvious. I've I've been wondering for a little while now why uh, the boards, David Sullivan, David uh, Daniel Kretinsky, who, whoever is in charge of this, has not pulled the trigger yet. Because I, I thought it was clear. I did wonder if the game on Saturday was a turning point because clearly there was a disconnect between uh, the fans and David Moyes. What was evident, and you will have noticed because I've mentioned it in videos before, that there is a disconnect between the team and David Moyes' tactics. You can see it in their body language. You, and here's the point. You know this. You've seen it. I've seen it. Everybody's seen it. If this is now news to David Sullivan, we're in a really, really bad position because it means he can't recognise the bleeding obvious. This is really apparent. If, you, if, you're one of our, if you're one of our patrons, you'll know that when, I, uh, when myself and Gio did our player ratings video, I was discussing in that how... It's clear that Declan Rice is frustrated with David Moyes, but there is no line, open line of communication between Declan Rice and the owner, David Sullivan, for him to articulate. As far as I understand it, they don't communicate. So the, the opportunity for Declan to turn around to the owner and say that that is not an unhappy dressing room just isn't there. I guess you're relying on Declan relaying that to Mark Noble and then Mark Noble relaying that back to David Sullivan. Not entirely sure that would happen because Mark Noble has his own loyalties towards uh, David Moyes. But make no, make no mistake about it, as people in that dressing room who are criticising David Moyes to Mark Noble, this, this is a mess. I mean, it gets, it really does. It gets absolutely worse than this. Uh, let's just go through uh, the article now and then we'll just want to discuss a couple of things. Uh, the article reads, I'll be as quick as I can, David Moyes uh, faced a battle to quell growing discontent within his squad after West Ham's relegation fears deepened following a 4 nil defeat to Brighton. Um, it says the, boys have, the, the, boys, the board have stood by Moyes even though the shambolic performance on Saturday has caused alarm and they are hoping for a positive response. Uh, <laughs> I don't, don't laugh. Uh, West Ham, who are a point above the bottom three, yet yeah, it goes on to say we're, we're gonna, about to play Aston Villa and we're playing the Europa League. Uh, it said, although Moyes has not lost the support of the hierarchy, his tactics are causing unease in the dressing room. It's understood. I mean, that is... When someone says it is understood, I've been... I, you, can, you can read between the lines. I've been told... Just you can swap that in. Uh, some players have grown weary of his caution and feel it's holding them back. There is an increasing lack of faith 
in the approach favoured by Moyes, who's had little success with his attempts to introduce a more attacking style this season. Uh, please don't, it goes on, there's more. I'll tell you what, go and read the article. If you just, if you just Google Guardian Jacob Steinberg West Ham, in Google, go go and go and read the article. Uh, I, I won't I won't read any more. Uh, you know, go and go and check it out after you've watched this. Uh, there's there's more to it, but that's the gist of it. But I just really want to make the point. Uh, this is not something that's there just purely for for clickbait and just for hits. Let's let's be honest. They, Jacob could go and write about. I don't know. Could probably go and write about Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool and Roy Keane and and, and all of that stuff and get more hits. It's more newsworthy. Liverpool beating Manchester United 7-0 is more newsworthy. You don't need to do this uh, to get hits. Uh, I think it's true. It's quite obvious it's true. We um, we discussed in our player ratings video that there had been, not not an altercation, but there had certainly been some, uh, some, some harsh words and some stern words on the touchline between Kevin Nolan and David Moyes at the game. Um, some have reported, and I don't know this to be the truth, OK? I, I, let me just say that. But it was clear they had stern words. You can see it from their body language. And this is what worries me, how the board don't know this. How, if, if they can't recognise something as simple as body language and they can't see it, they can't recognise a frustrated squad when they see one, then we really are in danger. Because th that article goes on to say they're hopeful that David Moyes can turn it around. They, they want to give him time. That's, that's what it says in that article. They want to give him time. Oh, he said plenty, hasn't he? Um, anyway. Uh, so whilst I'm not sure that this rumour is true, and the rumour is that after speaking with David Moyes, uh, Kevin Nolan threw his iPad down. Um, I don't know how true that was, but you could see there was frustration there. The other story, now, I, I was, as you, as you will know, I was watching that, that touchline intermittently. To be fair, all the play was down the other end of the pitch in the second half. There wasn't an awful lot else to watch, particularly when you stood behind the goal. But you could also see that there was a point was when Ogbonna was injured. And Ogbonna was down. It seemed like a long time well, when we were there, certainly. Dave, uh, David Moyes called Declan Rice over. They stood next to each other. And again, the body language was really negative. You could tell that Declan Rice was, was frustrated. And, and I use that word um, because it's another phrase that I would use instead of that. Uh, but you could see this, this wasn't the body language of two people who were in agreement having a conversation. The body language between David Moyes and Declan Rice was, uh, was not good. As I hear afterwards, Declan Rice threw his bottle down. Now, I don't know if people are just saying this, but I mean, lots of people have said it. That's the other thing. Lots of people have said it. Um, I don't know. I wonder if the bottle hit the iPad. It was, anyway, who cares? Um, so, so that's... That's a really real, that's a real worry. A real worry if that was the case. Now, this goes back to, and that article alludes to the fact that the, the squad were very uh, despondent after the Tottenham game. Uh, they, they felt that maybe Tottenham were there for the taking. Tottenham were in a, in, in, a, in a sticky position themselves. Their manager wasn't there. And the squad felt that we were overly cautious. And they wanted us to attack more. Because of that, it prompted, as we understand it, a team meeting. Declan Rice uh, convened a team meeting and home truths were spoken. What they were, who knows? You can make it up in your own mind. You're not doing enough. You've been crap. You need to do this. You need this. You need to do better. So on and so forth. After that, we then go on and we beat Nottingham Forest 4-0. Clearly, everybody is buoyant. And there's going to be a sense of relief around the squad because that's happened. And I think reading between the lines, possibly a feeling that. I don't know whether we've turned a corner, but I, I can imagine how a 4-0 win can push those feelings of we're not attacking enough to one side. I can understand how the squad might have thought, oh, OK, we're going to move forward now. We're going to start attacking more. But it's fair to say before the Nottingham Forest game, the squad thought David Moyes' tactics were overly negative. Um, after the Nottingham Forest game, obviously we had the game against Man United. We, 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 did, we did attack them. We did attack them. Uh, we were the better team, I think, for 65 minutes. However, I think probably that, as I said at the time, that was their reserve team. And I think bearing in mind what Liverpool had done to their main team, it probably puts that in a bit of perspective. You get back to the Brighton game. 
and we're defending again and we don't we just don't know what to do it was quite clear i agree with geo on this if you heard his video i don't think declan rice taking a swipe at the fans i think he was taking a swipe at david Moyes' tactics and it was quite clear when you put it all together you hear hear what he said in the interview you look at his body language on the touchline yeah yeah you hear rumors as well of course um and then you get an article like this from jacob steinberg then you start to realise that there are massive problems here. And I've said this on numerous occasions over the past few weeks. I don't believe that David Moyes' words carry anything anymore. I said, when I was talking a couple of days ago about new manager bounce, I said about the squad believing in, in David Moyes' messaging, about him having an up, up, uplifting message about when he, when David Moyes walks into the dressing room and says, these are the tactics for this match, lad. You're going to be marking him, you're going to be marking him, we're going to do this, do this, do this, and that will help us win the game. The players have heard it so many times now, they're just going, this is not going to work, mate. That, that's unfortunately what you get. They're going to lack belief and real faith in David Moyes' tactics. That's clear. And now we're, now we're actually seeing, we're, we're seeing evidence before our eyes, and now we're getting reports, murmurings are coming out. And it must have taken something for this person, this player, to brief Jacob Steinberg. I mean, it can't have been easy, I have to say. They probably wanted to do it for quite some time. But they're doing it now. How they respond and how the squad responds can be really, really interesting. But this is not going to be good. The squad wants to attack more. You can see all these discontented players. You could, I mean, the Skamaka wasn't even used. I mean, I, I, dare, I dare say... I find it, one of the reasons I was pleased we'd signed Skamaka was because he'd already been abroad before. The fact that he'd been at PSV Eindhoven made me think, OK, this is great. It's not, it's not his first time out of Italy. He's clearly well-travelled. This is absolute, this is fine. Um, so I've never particularly bought into the fact that he wants to leave West Ham just because he's homesick. I think a large part of it is... I wouldn't have been surprised if he was if he was lied to, if he was told we were gonna we're gonna build the team around you, we'll get players up in support. The reality's been very different whenever he's played, he had to play up on his own a system that doesn't suit him. He's used to playing up front with Raspadori, this is not happening. So I'd imagine there's a lot of things and there's a lot of players. For Skamaka, you can probably replace Skamaka with any number of players who are frustrated. And frustrated with the way that we play. And and what I don't understand now is with all that evidence, with, with all that knowledge, how the board can still sit there and say we're not going to get rid of him. It, it, it's, it's incompetence, um, or it's just an outright refusal to believe what your eyes are telling you. It's... It is, I mean, it's like doing this. La, 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 la. It, it's, like, it's like that, isn't it? That's, that's what they're doing. The, the fans see it. The fans are frustrated. You get the impression that that almost if we lost to Southampton, uh, lost to um, okay, as a Freudian slip there. By the way, I meant Aston Villa. If we lose to South, if we, I don't want to do it again. If we lose to Aston Villa, and the the jeers and the boos ring out in a London stadium. And there's protests again. They can't be the same as happening in Burnley because there's all sorts of barriers and everything in the way. But the stadium as a whole announces its, its displeasure. You can almost imagine David Sullivan there thinking, well, how's that happened? Where, where did that come from? We've got the best man for the job, right? It's like he doesn't see that the fans have had enough. He doesn't see that, that we are, we are the one of the worst teams in the league. He doesn't see that the players have had enough and there's a difference. It's, I think it's such a, a cliche, an easy cliche to say. You know, Moyes has lost the dressing room. Might, might not be as much as that. They might quite like Moyes. They might just not like his tactics. They might be the majority of them. I know it's hard to say this against Brighton because they stank the place out. They were all awful. But it might be enough that just because they don't like David Moyes, they're still going to run. They're still going to try and do his tactics. They just don't believe in them. But those are the marginal gains. It's those small percentages. It's that belief. It's um, I, I I find this absolutely bizarre that that the board are watching somebody run us into the ground. Um, 
and, and they're overseeing it. And, and the point comes where the pressure turns towards them. And the point, that, that point is now. It's here. Now, David Moyes is putting out of his misery, quite frankly. And I, I don't know, so it's a horrible turn of phrase, that, because, I mean, you know, it's got, it's got, um, it's got more uh, permanent connotations, and I don't mean that. But misery is a good term, I think. Because, and this is what I don't think the board are noticing, and I hope that this article and maybe Jacob Steinberg's relationship with David Sullivan can help prompt this, because actually David Moyes looks completely miserable. This little spark that they're looking for, it's not there. He doesn't look like a man capable of motivating anyone. I don't think he's capable of motivating himself. Probably most importantly, though, and we've all suspected this for some time, in terms of the misery and looking miserable, it's now doubt, it's now the players. Not only do we suspect the players are miserable, they've come out and said it. 